Welcome to the 2023 Road Warriors Recognition Awards. Today we have Tori Ritchie, the Interim Perioperative Educator at Luminous Doctors Medical Center just outside of Washington, D.C. Welcome, Tori. Thank you. Um, I retired just a couple of years ago. Um, I um, had held several different roles in the OR from assistant manager, manager, director, educator. And um, uh, when I retired, I really missed um, taking part in, and helping nurses learn. That was probably my favorite part of the job. And um, so I decided to uh, do it as, on an interim basis so I could still kind of enjoy retirement, but then also um, help out some some companies and kind of see the country at the same time. I've That's had some cool. fun assignments, yeah. That's kind of the best of both worlds. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of share some of the different projects uh, that I've worked on, um, including um, you know, maybe the the span of the project as well as the different disciplines um, that you have to work with, and um, you know, just kind of demonstrating that um, you know I can kind of work with different groups and um, um, try to uh, uh, reach a goal together. Yeah. And are you um, just doing educator roles, or are you open to director roles? Um, as interim, I've so far I've just done educator roles, but um, mm -hmm. I am open to doing director roles as well or manager roles. Okay. Um, be, because I um will only do interim. Um, I like to ask and see if there's somebody on staff who they're um maybe looking at to maybe grow and mentor into the role. Um. You know, uh, I, I don't just want to fill the gap. I want it to keep going. And so um, if there's somebody on staff that um, that we can kind of get into the role, I can get them included in things early on, try to assess their their abilities and um, and uh, kind of what they need. Um, I, I try to let them know that I'm I'm there to help. I'm not um, there to make their lives miserable. Um, I um, uh, tell them that I'm, I'm not going to be making any changes without input. Um, every hospital is different and they have uh, different pros and cons and um, uh, everybody has roadblocks and obstacles and trying to find out what those are. Um, you know, so I really try to talk with the staff a lot. Um, and just let them know I, I want their ideas, I want their suggestions. I get some information from leadership about what they want done, but there's always a lot of, um, uh, you know, uh, things that the leadership maybe isn't even aware of um, that could help um, uh, make their lives a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, my next question is about um, recapturing lost revenue. So. You know, as the pandemic surges have waned, you know, there's been a lot of money lost within the last couple of years. Um, what are some initiatives or strategies that you can think of or that you've implemented in the past and maybe to increase revenues? And it's interesting that you're an educator because I know that there's a big need for educators now, which mm -hmm. helps to increase staff, um, which maybe helps to increase volume when you have more people there. So kind of can yeah. you like connect those threads? Yeah, um, I, I think um, interviewing and hiring the right candidates, um, uh, not doing too many at once, uh, because then that that keeps them from having a good experience. Um, current in in my current position, we've um, I identified some big gaps in supply chain that um, leadership maybe even wasn't aware of that. Um, can greatly affect uh, uh, costs and um, and just smoothness of the cases and saving time and and resources within the OR, but also getting accurate uh, charge capture, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, can you speak to kind of the the attitudes um, more experienced nurses have when it comes to like the new nurses coming in? 
um, that are interested in periap, like what's the kind of environment like for a new nurse that is interested in periap, but they don't, you know, they're new, <laughs> they don't, they're yeah. kind of learning, like, is there, is it kind of welcoming or, um, I'm not trying to say people are mean to the newbies, but like, mm -hmm. kind of, what is it like? They may just not have the patience to like have somebody shadow them. Kind of, what are things like in that area? Um, I think right now it's it's harder than it was. Uh, OR has always been um, kind of hard to get into because um, uh, people have um, uh, I wouldn't say strong personalities, but they're they're assertive about um, what they're thinking. They're um, in the OR, we have to be really strong patient advocates. And um, sometimes, you, you, you know, uh, because the patient can't speak for themselves in the OR, obviously, but um, we um, kind of have to, um, uh, we, we speak very directly. And uh, sometimes that's a little um, harder for a new person to um, get used to, but, um, you know, I encourage all the new staff to really just try to pay attention, ask questions. Um, you know, paying attention really gets you a long way with both ex seasoned staff and uh, with the surgeons and the anesthesia and the OR. If they see you making an effort, they're going to try to help you out as best they can. But um, mm -hmm. it, it is hard because people are, um, they kind of have orientation fatigue. Mm -hmm. Um especially when uh, we seem to be getting a lot of people coming through um, to get experience and then to travel. Right. And, <laughs> and that hurts. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you've spent a lot of time with somebody and you're trying to give them all your best hints and, um, and you know, things to, to improve their work and then they take it somewhere else. So it feels like a betrayal. Yeah, it does. It mm -hmm. does. And so, uh, you know, trying to make sure the staff know, not that they can control that completely, but make sure that they have a welcoming environment so then people want to stay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the they culture. have to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think like coordinating schedules and things, um, you, you need to kind of have some rules um, to live by. You can't have uh, one one team be able to do one thing and another uh, not be able to do it. Um, kind of set set the the um, set the standard, hold people to that standard, but knowing that you know there's always one offs here and there. But um, you know, setting good expectations and making it clear to them uh, they shouldn't be finding out after a situation. You need to have. Uh, um, you know, clear expectations from the start. Um, people accept it so much better than if they hear about something afterward and they feel like they are, um, have done something wrong, you know, or, um, you know, by the, that time, sometimes emotions get in the way and, um, and make that conversation not as pleasant. So trying to, um, make sure that the teams are accountable. And that is also means that we need to have reliable documentation. We can't just talk about um, stories. We need to have like specific information. If you have um, vague perceived issues, it's really difficult to measure um, it, any impact of, of any changes that you make, or it's, help, it's also difficult to, to uh, get buy-in for changes. So I think um, you know, just avoiding the the perceived images and really trying to get documentation. Um, uh, go in there with the with uh, the thought behind that it's it's fact finding. It's it's um, you're in there to try to assist and to try to um, help them see if there's a different way to do things, not just telling them you know you need to do it this way because. Um, like I said, every hospital is different. They've kind of got their own patterns and their own ways of doing things. And um, if you're there for an interim assignment, you're, you may not um, be able to or or need to change something that's been 30 years in the making. There, there may be reasons behind it. So um, try to uh, uncover the obstacles and then follow up on those fixes. Um, 
kind of working on those fixes before then you look at the data, um, the, the post data. You you can't expect improvements before uh, you've put some fixes in place. Um, otherwise, it just kind of leaves us all disappointed and frustrated. Right. Right. And we start um, pointing fingers at one another and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, surgeons say it's nursing, nursing says it's anesthesia, you know, yeah, the triangle. Yeah, yeah it falls apart. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then we don't get anything done. Right. Yeah. I think, um, again, m making sure that the patients are pre opt well, uh, uh, good communication it, w whenever possible. Um, giving them written communication because uh, when someone's maybe on the phone or at an appointment, uh, their anxiety level is very high. And um, so, you know, still going over it, but but giving them that paperwork that they can look at at home when maybe they've um, their anxiety level isn't so high. And then uh, you can get uh, uh, better adherence to the pre-op instructions. Yeah, that's and also huge. having a, maybe a family member help them interpret yeah. if they don't understand. Yeah, that seems it's very, you know, scary to get surgery, you know, even whether you are you have to or you want to. <laughs> right, right. And so it can be very confusing, all these things you have to do. And then from what I understand, like different, sur like a surgeon's office, they may have a different process than the hospital, but the surgeon does work at the hospital. And so it can be very um, different at different right. facilities. Right. Yeah. So just making sure that the things are streamlined mm -hmm. and not too wordy. Things need to be simple. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, uh, you don't need to say the same thing over and over um, mm -hmm. on that paperwork because then it, it causes confusion and opportunities for conflicting information and things right. like that. So but and keeping right. it updated. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of things still say, you know, you must have a mask before you come to the hospital and things like that. And yeah. a lot of hospitals have gone away from that. And right. so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and masks inhibit communication and everything. So I think it's great that, yeah. that many hospitals have gone away from that. So I agree. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think letting you, you know you get so scared when you're taking on a big role and you don't want to um disappoint anybody um so i think uh trying to include them in as many decisions um as you can while you're there um letting them know your thought process and and how you arrive at decisions um and then um oh i just lost my train of thought um uh, yeah, letting them know how how you're arriving at the decisions, and then um, letting them know that they will make mistakes, um, and it, you know, working on those relationships kind of makes us all forgive one another. And so, admitting when when you do make a mistake or you kind of make a decision that maybe didn't work out the best. Um, you know, admitting it and um, involving as many people as you can, the right players, um, and and knowing when you can have too many people in a decision, um, and kind of knowing you know how to filter that out. Mm -hmm. So Excellent. yeah, and accepting the fact that we're human, mm -hmm. and that um, you know that we we have to ask for help. Right. <laughs> you can't do it all. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us today. Yeah. Awesome. It was and fun. It was fun. Thank you. 